being the only member of this House who's had the honor of voting for the member for Mont Royal during the last election, I wish to thank him for the pleasure of sharing his time with me. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise to respond to the motion from the member for Victoria, which calls for the immediate decriminalization of the simple possession of marijuana for personal use. Tel que je l'expliquerai. As I will explain, our government cannot support such a path. One important reason has to do with organized crime and the fact that following this path, as recommended by the motion, would increase revenue to criminal organizations. Until such time as we legalize, regulate, and restrict marijuana, which was our platform commitment, we need police officers to continue to enforce the law related to marijuana under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, marijuana possession, production, and trafficking are illegal in Canada. Simple possession of up to 30 grams is an offense with a possible fine of up to $1,000 and up to six months in jail. More than half of all drug offenders reported by police are for marijuana possession, Mr. Speaker. In 2014, they amounted to 60,000 offenses reported and just over 22,000 charges laid. Most, if not all, of the ma that marijuana is supplied at the moment by organized crime. As this House is aware, the government was elected on a platform that included the legalization and strict regulation of marijuana. The Minister of Justice and her colleagues in health and, the, and in public safety are pursuing an orderly and responsible approach to fulfilling this commitment. Nous allons légaliser... We are going to legalize marijuana. We are going to regulate it, and we are going to restrict its access. We will prevent children from having access to it. And another important fact, we will deprive organized crime of the profits that they would otherwise get from this lucrative trade. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, we will punish more severely those who provide marijuana to minors or who choose to drive a vehicle while under marijuana's influence or who choose to sell it outside of regulated frameworks. We hope to accomplish this by the end of next year. After careful consultations with the provinces and territories and also after consultations with representatives of uh, law enforcement and other concerned groups. We are striking a task force on marijuana legalization and regulation to consult with Canadians broadly, as well as a wide range of stakeholders. These stakeholders will include provincial and territorial governments. They will include experts in public health, substance abuse, law enforcement, criminal justice, and economics, and they will include indigenous and youth groups. But the member for Victoria would like us to decriminalize without a proper legal framework in place. It is important to keep in mind, Mr. Speaker, that there are unintended consequences to doing so. Of all the unintended consequences of decriminalization, perhaps the most dangerous is the opportunity it would provide to organized crime groups to profit from illegal drugs. If we were to adopt the member's motion for the months remaining until legalization receives royal assent, marijuana would continue to be illegal, but users could acquire it illegally without fear of criminal justice sanctions. This gives criminals an opportunity to ramp up their operations. So, 
the unintended consequences of the member's motion would be to aid the criminal organizations that are currently involved in importing, growing, and selling marijuana in Canada. And make no mistake about it, they have no qualms about selling it to our youth. Overwhelmingly, Mr. Speaker, organized crime groups that operate in Canada are involved in illegal drugs and have established networks to grow, procure, and sell marijuana and launder the profits. About 80% of crime groups identified in Canada are involved in the illicit drug market, particularly at street level traffickers. Sale of marijuana is currently a big business. The profits give organized crime even more power. These criminals can use the profits to move into such activities as illegal migration, trafficking of human beings, money laundering, economic crimes, cross-border smuggling of counterfeit goods, and even environmental crimes such as the dumping of toxic wastes. I know that it is not the member for Victoria's intention to promote such criminal activities. Nevertheless, those could be consequences of the motion. By regulating marijuana, the government will restrict the role of uh, criminal organizations in the sale and distribution of marijuana. Full, what, before fully exploring all of the elements of legalization, we are giving organized crime an opportunity to further entrench their involvement in the illegal marijuana market. It will be even harder to get these criminal enterprises out of the marijuana trade once we legalize. There are many other aspects of marijuana legalization that will need to be considered, and the task force will do that. It will look at such issues as the impact on criminal records for simple possession, for example, and I know that the impact on ordinary Canadian is a ma major impetus for the motion before us. But we need to consider the impact of the new system on organized crime. Decriminalizing marijuana without at the same time having a legal framework and a regulatory framework will uh, give too much power to uh, organized crime. We need to fight organized crime. We need to punish that activity and we need to deprive those organizations of their, these, their sources of revenue. Under no circumstance and for no reason should we give carte blanche to organized crime. It would be irresponsible to decriminalize marijuana before legalizing it. Up to that point, law, the law must be respected and applied. Mr. Speaker, I urge and encourage all members to vote against this motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member spoke uh, very firmly and forcefully about uh, protecting children. My question is simple. People don't have much other choice if they want to obtain marijuana other than to turn to organized crime. Now, imagine that marijuana is legalized. If there is a sales network set up that is uh, only for those 18 and older, what will happen to adolescents who are not able to, uh, to get their uh, a joint at, at, a, at a store? They will have to get it on the black market, and I'm sure that uh, that will be even more attractive for them. What we want is to avoid having teenagers ending up with criminal records that they will have uh, their entire lives just because of a youthful mistake. The Honourable Member for Saint-Léonard, Saint-Michel. 
Mr. Speaker, I thank my colleague for his question. What we need to remember, Mr. Speaker, is that we're talking about a very broad framework here. The goal is not simply to decriminalize marijuana and then to say, well, now we're legalizing it. We are setting up an entire framework for legaliza legalization, regulation, and use of marijuana. And there is a whole series of measures to support this framework. They have to do with prevention, education, and incentives to uh, avoid marijuana use and discourage it. Questions and comments? Member for Burnaby Westminster. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's actually Burnaby, New Westminster. It used to be New Westminster, Burnaby, but it changed after the elections. So, uh, but I promise uh, the member is the same. So I'll ask the same question that I've asked many times today. Because the Liberals claim that uh, they will be helping more people with their approach, their, which is a little bit different than the Conservatives. We know that there were 57,000 arrests in 2014, and the Liberals took over in late 2015, and they claim that they've been nicer, that they arrested fewer people, but they haven't given any numbers. So, could the member finally tell us, can the Liberals finally tell us what the numbers are? Can they give us any number to support their position and their claim that they are, were not as bad as the Conservatives when it comes to arresting Canadians for simple possession uh, of marijuana for personal use? The Honourable Member for Senate and Saint Michel. Mr. Speaker, I thank my colleague for his question. But I want to focus on one aspect. We are not dealing with numbers here. This is The goal is not to quantify this. Many times in the history of this country, uh, certain behaviors have been allowed, and Parliament has aimed to uh, ban them. And that's what we're talking about here. We're thinking about the process. We're consulting. And other times in history, uh, certain behaviors were banned, and Parliament attempted to allow those behaviors or situations. What is striking in the NDP's motion is that here we have to allow uh, the law to, to stand, and then some people might break the law. But one thing that my uh, colleague hasn't mentioned is the fact that this motion is actually aiming to provide more funding to organized crime. That would be the effect. I'd like to hear him comment on that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate. Bonordre. 